What's going on everyone? So let me get started by saying that for a while I have used MX4 for uh, all my builds since uh, it has proven to be one of the most reliable and affordable thermal paste out there. I've also recently begun using thermal pastes such as uh, Thermo Grease, Sleek Cryo, Knot and Conduct and Out. Um, but only for certain applications such as the direct contact between the IHS and die on CPUs. I will mainly focus on two of these thermal pastes, MX4 and Prolimitech PK3, as I have never used PK3, but I wanted to give it a shot to see how well it performs. With a 11.2 watts per meter Kelvin of thermal conductivity, PK3 seems like a, it could offer some thermal benefits. I've also included, just for reference, a cooler master paste I got with my EVO 212 cooler. First, let's go ahead and look at the paste consistency and how well it spreads. Right off the bat, I can tell you that this paste is easy to work with. Spreading is no issue whatsoever. Next up is MX4 and I can tell you from experience that this thermal paste is easy to work with, easy to spread, no problem. Alright, so now let's see how well PK3 does in this test. So PK3 is a bit harder to spread than MX4. It does have a drier consistency, um, and that may be the reason why. Uh, this isn't as bad as Icy Diamond, but it does take a little extra work there to get this therm thermal paste spread evenly. Now finally, let's go ahead and take a look at Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut and see how well it spreads.
And I have to say that Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut is perhaps the easiest to spread out of all four in this test. Here we have an overview of all four pastes. You can clearly see the color difference and consistency of each one. Again, PK3 being the flatter of the four. Now let's go ahead and get the HD 7870 graphics card ready for testing. I test with this card here in particular because it's one of the hottest running cards that I have ever seen. At only 120 watts TDP, this thing will reach easily 86 degrees under a normal load with the stock cooler. But this makes it the perfect candidate for this kinds of tests. One thing I would like to mention here guys, is that when it comes to direct on-die applications, you want to spread the thermal paste by hand. Um, do not use a P method or anything else. Uh, you can get away with the P method uh, just fine over a CPU IHS since it is nothing but a metal cover over the die. But on die applications, you want to make sure that every single corner is covered properly with thermal paste. Since right under the surface, in every single corner, you have heating, heat creating components, which if not cooled properly, will cause instability. Even if the area is just half a millimeter, this is enough to cause issues. So make sure you spread the thermal paste evenly across the die. And don't worry about adding too much, although a um, uncooked rice grain size application should give you just enough paste to spread over the entire area of this GPU and CPU dies. I also want to mention that the graphics card fan is set to 100% speed during all tests at an ambient temperature of 24 degrees Celsius. On our first test, the MX4 thermal paste shows some good performance at helping to keep the temperatures down. It topped off at 73 degrees Celsius and stabilized around 72 degrees. Keep in mind also that I have overclocked this card and have also pushed the power limit to 120%. This is something I will never be able to achieve with the stock cooler. Next we have PK3 and I have to say that I am impressed by these results, although seemingly not major in terms of temperature difference. Remember that all we have changed here is just the thermal paste, and that alone allowed for 2 to 3 degrees in lower temperatures over MX4, which is one of the best thermal pastes out there. Overall, except for the Cooler Master paste, which allowed temperatures as high as 76 degrees Celsius, every paste performed very well with Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut and Prolimatech PK3 performing nearly identical. But there is also a premium to pay for all these benefits. So this must be also taken under consideration when thinking about which thermal paste to buy. The question is, is it worth paying an extra 10 to $15 for a few degrees in lower temperatures? Well, I will let you answer that one. For me, MX4 is good enough thermal paste. It is reliable, easy to work with, and performs real well even at high temperatures. And that's all I have for now, guys. Please hit like and subscribe if you liked the video, and I will see you guys on the next one. You take care. Bye.